We're on easy street And it feels so sweet Cause the world is but a treat When you're on easy street Welcome to the Easy Street Radio Show Hosted by Rob Scribner Grab a cup of coffee and let's get started Our videos are made possible by Ranger Rob Poopy Bags Available at Amazon right now Hi guys and welcome to Easy Street I'm Rob Scribner. I'm your host, and you can find Easy Street on Spreaker, several other platforms, and uh, and so forth. So just go down to the description. You can find out where to find the show. So in response to a video I just did a couple of days ago um, about internet TV, uh, first of all, let's get something straight. Roku is cool. I love Roku. It's got lots of great shows, lots of old shows that I really love and the whole works. I also like um, the company TV Startup. How um, They're new and they have a great idea, but there's a whole bunch of things missing. So the purpose of this show is for the consumer. One is the people wanting to create a television station. And uh, what I've noticed is there's a big fad, um, especially, I don't know, because we did it. But there's a big fad of people diving into it because the radio networks or, or internet TV is kind of dying out. And so we're looking for an alternative. The other problem out there is like YouTube and Facebook and that stuff have been uh, censoring us a lot and stuff like that. Um, you know, I have a, a German Shepherd playing with a squeaky toy here, so deal with it. But I really want to show you why inter internet networks. Uh, should beware. Um, and I talked about that a lot in the first video. Um, and the other thing is I want to show you the truth about people putting their shows on Roku and expecting that it's going to really help with their views and the whole works. Now, I put my camera at a funny angle here because I'm going to move it in front of my Roku account. So bear with me. I'm going to actually do this live on video. We're going to put this right there. All right, so let me get this thing in place so we can see uh, my television station and get this thing to hold still. Come on, a little more. Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay. Sorry about that, but uh, I want to sh show you this is an, a Roku television. And um, I've got to do this with a remote control. So uh, what you see here is the typical menu that everybody has for um, Roku. In order to find your show, you need to move down to, well, not your show, but to search. And then you go in here, and I'm going to use the example Cutting Edge TV. Now, it automatically is showing up at the top here. And that's not really the point I want to make as I want to show you. Let me get that other screen up here. I want to show you that on the screen right now, you're seeing our video on demand. And the one I want to show you right now, I'm going to use an example because he's a friend of mine, is Leo Roundtable. Super, I mean, we've got tons of shows. Um, here and he's he was with us for two months before we decided to shut this down. Now, his concern and many other people's concern is how do I get found on Roku? So let's uh let's talk about that. So I've got all these shows. This is the website version of our site. This is a uh, cuttingedgenetwork.com, which will soon go down. Um, but let me uh bring my mouse back over here. I know this is a slow process. Good reasoning behind all this. So let's go to the Roku television. And we found Cutting Edge TV. You can see it on the top there. I didn't even type it in because it obviously remembers me. But let's, uh, and this is a slow process too, let's type in Leo. I mean, the guy's got a lot of shows with us. He should show up, right? Leo, well, don't see anything over to the right yet, 
Um, let me get a little bit more farther into his title. Round. Oh, <laughs> you. N. D. Nothing's turning up off to the right. You see it? Nothing. No search results at all. Oh, okay. If you don't believe me, I'll go even farther. Let's put the word table in there, round table. All of his, I made sure that was in all of his uh, descriptions. Table. Oops, didn't take there. Table. L. E. Do you see anything showing his show on there right here? Anything? And the answer is no. If I put any of our shows, and I had probably a hundred shows on Roku, on Cutting Edge TV, and you don't believe me, let me go uh, uh, go back to the main menu. Home, and I go down, and I uh, got Cutting Edge right here. And it goes into our little splash page here. And I'll do a cute little swirly thing right here. And then it goes into the menu of our TV station. And see all those shows? All those shows, tons of shows, endless shows. And none of them show up in the search engine. So what's the purpose of being on Roku if your show won't be found? And that's my point, is uh, it, it, uh, I know one of the sales pitches that everybody's been getting was, oh, I'd be able to see my show um, on Roku. People will be able to search us. And the answer to that is, is no, they're not going to be able to search you. And uh, <laughs> I got my green screen all messed up. No, they won't be able to search you. And uh, since I got to play around with my camera here, um, and bear with me because I really wanted to make this point is let me grab my little camera and put it in the right spot. Um, so all of us don't go crazy, except for me wiggling this thing around like crazy. There, back to the green screen again. So I hope that shows you why I'm concerned. For people that have podcasts and shows and live shows and live streams, I know the first thing that goes through your mind is, oh, they can find me on search on, on the search of Roku. And the answer is no, they can't. And they won't because these channels that they're asking us to start are called private channels. And it, under my impression, and I, I wrote to support all I could, I wrote to them and asked them, why can't I find uh, any of my shows? And the answer was, Roku only searches the title. Yeah, so, and, I mean, in a television world, the world is a little different. Um, I mean, everything is by channel. If you think of like the Big Bang Theory or something like that, you kind of think of CBS or wherever it's playing. And you think more of the channels. So the people running the channel really are not trying to advertise your show. It's all about advertising their network. So if you're going to be found on Roku, first of all, anybody that's on it, uh, it's important on their shows to say that they are on Roku. Just go to Cutting Edge TV and uh, search it on uh, Roku, and then it's on that channel. But if they go to Roku and try to search you individually, not going to happen. And you need to know that. So once again, I'll tell you, I love Roku. And I actually liked the platform of TV startup, but I think they're not there yet. Um, their software has some problems. The, um, the streams can get bogged up and you have to reboot a lot. Um, and then what's also I'm noticing is a lot of uh, guys that are pushing their Roku's are going, hey, you'll be able to advertise and put your commercials on different channels. There is no other channels. There's other, there's a, um, well, let me show you. There's video on demand. 
as soon as I get the picture to come back up, right here. If they are saying channels, it's actually one of the same. This is video on demand. It's categories that can give you your own category, like Sons of Liberty gave them their own category, but I cannot give them their own channel. There is no such thing as more channels unless they set up another television station. So that means I would have to have a cutting edge TV two and a three and a four. Each one would cost me about $300 a month. So that is not a true statement. These are just categories. We can give you your own category. No problem. And that's how it works. And uh, the folks that do this and stream to us are, uh, uh, we've had a couple of problems. One is the TV startup software, when you stream directly to our software, what happens is the software detects that a stream's coming in takes about 10 or 15 seconds to say, oh, it's definitely a stream. Let's start recording it. So that's the cool part. I will record the show. Well, one of my clients was upset with me because by the time they saw their video on demand and uh, we put their uh, thumbnail on it, they realized that the first 20, 30 seconds of the show, which had some commercials and, and stuff that was important to them in their intro was cut off because the software did not detect the show was coming in for an, about 30 seconds once it started. And so what, you know, we had to recommend to them is like, well, put a countdown. You know, that's why you see a lot of shows have countdowns first. It's to give the platforms time to resolve or um, the show coming in. It's true with Facebook. It's true with, um, with uh, uh, YouTube, all the places you upload your stream to, you should put a buffer in there before you put your important information, like your intro and maybe commercials or your sponsors in there. So, uh, um, but the problem with that is streams cannot cross each other. So if someone has a show at six, and they stream and they go, and we had this happen several times, and they go right to the edge. And the next show, because even the software, this TV startup software, once you stop streaming, it takes a few minutes to realize, oh, the stream has stopped. I'll stop recording. The other problem is, is when a new stream comes in, if it crosses over that stream at all at the end, one of those two streams will not record. It will just drop off, go away which is really irritating. Let's say I have a show and it's a two hour show and I run it and then someone ahead of me started their, my, I, I took my stream too far, which is common. People just like can't seem to cut it off. And the next show comes in and I come back to you as a, as a network and I say, guess what? We didn't get your show. Can you use, uh, download your MP4 from whatever software you're using? Some people do it from Facebook or YouTube. And then they've got to send me uh, like a, 12 gigabyte gigabyte file through Dropbox and st or through a uh, Google drive. And um, that's very irritating. That's a big file. That means you have to upload that file to Dropbox or to Google drive, mail it to us. Then I've got to download a 12 gigabyte file to my desktop, but I'm not done yet. Then I need to, pull up the special software that they give us to upload to our servers on Roku, which is not really Roku. It's a third party um, uh, platform. And that takes forever. It takes probably a good hour, hour and a half to get those shows up there. So you can see there's a whole lot of work going on and there could be a lot of issues. And if you're doing live streams and you like the freedom of going a couple minutes early or all that stuff, that's got to stop if you're going to be on uh, on television. You um, And, you know, that's something to learn and that's something positive that you should learn to do because the bigger networks you get into, the more time is really important. Um, I've watched some of our shows work their way up to bigger networks and they had to get down to the seconds and minutes of their shows to support this radio stations, breaks, IDs, and commercials. So uh, <laughs> what a reality. So the reason I did a second video is uh, the networks 
people starting this recoup are definitely angry because they're looking at this as a money-making machine. They look at, oh my gosh, we can get these people to pay us. They can pay us for business stuff or they can do commercials and stuff like that. And they don't realize that these people paying are, uh, I thought I was wondering why it was hard to read anything. Oh, my glasses on. These people paying have an expectations of seeing their commercials ran when you say, and you can't control it. Not, not with the scheduling thing I showed you on TV startups. Um, you can do your best and come close and stuff like that. But um, there's a whole lot of, um, because a lot of these networks haven't gotten their Roku fired up yet, they're saying things that just aren't true. There is no other channels. There's only one channel. Like for us, it was Cutting Edge TV, which is no more. It's uh, the only reason I was able to show you anything is they haven't taken it off the air yet. Um, and so what we're trying to do is, if you're up for it and you like you know, to be on Roku and stuff, it's cool. But you cannot give it the same expectations as you would, say, on internet radio. Um, and if you think it's going to get you more get found easier on Google or Bing or any of the search engines. Not true. It's not going to happen. And if you've got a podcast or a show, most of the time the people I see making the best money are ones that are on platforms that have mon uh, that has monetary uh, income on it, like Spreaker and uh, some of these other ones. And also a lot of them sell their own merchandise, like cups and T-shirts and stuff. And those are great. If you really love the show you're watching, well, why not buy one of their shirts or T-shirts or one of their cups or hats or whatever? Um, that's how they can pay for what the platforms are on. But And they can talk about their stuff on Roku for sure, provided that they're actually even being seen on Roku. Because I'll, I'll, I'll put this challenge to anybody that's going on Roku with any channel right now. Ask them, show me how many people watched your show at 6 o'clock or whatever time your show played. I want to see how many viewers I got. And, and they can't do it. All they can show is an overall thing that's kind of uh, not exact at all. Why is that? Because the... TV startup platform is a third-party platform which is integrated into Roku's development site. So if you go to Roku, you'll see that you can sign up for a, a development site, and that's where you could start a, a Roku channel right there. The problem is you need a server to host all your videos on, and that is a costly thing too. And then having control between that server and scheduling and all those kind of things. Um, I, I, the reason I can't tell you more about the Roku Development Center is because I never got to see it. They didn't give me access to it, and you won't have access to it. The third-party people will. So there may be more reports in there that you might be able to get, but you're not going to get them from the third-party folks. You need to have a direct Roku development account to get whatever kind of files you can uh, or reports and traffic reports that you may want. And I cannot even guarantee you there because I haven't seen it that you're going to get the reports you want. So this is not a bashing of Roku. Roku is awesome. I like Roku. Uh, hey, where else can you go watch Bonanza to your purple in the face? Um, and TV startups, I like them too, but they need to improve their software, and maybe over time they will. But uh, I obviously was um, when we decided to leave because I left because I just couldn't answer the questions my clients wanted to know. How well are we doing? Is this you know? Is this a? Um, I'm paying you to be on Roku TV. I expect at least some reports. I expect to know how it's doing. And and that's a reasonable thing to ask. And 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 so if before you even go on to anybody's network that is doing Roku or Firestick and all the rest of them, ask them these questions like how are people going to find my show? What are you doing for your station to make sure people find your station? 
Um, cause it's really, the whole thing is about advertising the station or your channel. Um, it isn't about Leo Roundtable or Sons of Liberty or any of the shows I had on there. I can cannot advertise them. Uh, I can't make a link directly to them to where they could watch it. I could make a little bit of ads where I could say, here's where our video on demand on the website is. But it really didn't take people to the show on Roku. The only thing I could give is a link to Roku and how to add our channel to their to your menu, like I showed you. Um, but these are concerning things. So before you dive in really deep, this is pretty good money that these people are kicking out. I'm talking to the networks. Is do you really want to go down this path? Do you realize what's going to happen? Do you realize how this is going to impact your equipment, your computers? and your time because even though you may be paying 300 a month to be on Roku what about these hours and we're talking lots of hours hundreds of hours um definitely hundred hours in a month uh, at least an hour or two or more that you are now putting into Roku because of these really big files and most of your clients may not be making their own thumbnails. You may have to make their thumbnails. Maybe their shows have got too much stuff in the front and too much in the back, and you need to chop them up. Can you software can even handle a eight gigabyte file without crashing your computer? This is a warning to say you need to know this is what's going to happen, and your clients are going to be upset with you. So. If you're already a radio station, you're going into Roku and you're making these promises and you have really good relationships with your clients now, you could damage them. So this is an education site, not the bash Roku. Roku's awesome, but they're not YouTube. They're not Facebook. They're Roku. It's a television station for your, and it's all about your station, not the shows on it. You cannot search people's shows. That's that's important right there. I just showed you. I'm just not making this stuff up. And I some of these networks, I've warned them and told them because we were in it first and, and gave them information sh uh, saying, hey, you're going to have upset clients because you cannot control things the way you want to. You cannot report traffic like you want to. And you cannot run the commercials and, and products like you think you can. It doesn't work out that way. The scheduler doesn't work that way. And you can only schedule one day at a time. That means you have to go in and reschedule every day. And then there's two sections to this whole site. There's the video on demand where you put the videos and you give it a category and people can see it. Then you move those uh, over and you create a schedule and then you pull those videos into that too and you put your commercials in between the different shows. But you cannot put a commercial in the middle of a show. It won't happen. It's got to be at the end or at the beginning. However, if your sh television station gets big enough, then you can qualify for um, advertising that uh, advertisers have bought into through this is how tv startups makes their money um when you're getting a like 30,000 views i think it's 30,000 views a month you'll qualify to have ads ran on your roku channel the networks will start getting paid for that however the people that give shows to them commercials are going to play over the top of your show and they're and it's kind of cumbersome if you ever watch roku you ever seen the commercials how they work Oh my gosh, it's like, come on. Anyway, it's not a problem if you have to use the restroom. <laughs> anyway, um, so now these shows that may have advertisers on their shows already or products and stuff like that, and then new commercials that are coming from Roku are playing over the top of that, and we don't really know when they're coming. Um, it can be kind of irritating. And it's like, do you really want your podcast or your show or your live stream up in a place like that that's only really making money for the network. And if they're big enough, maybe more people will see your show. And uh, 
some of these guys are probably going to make rules like you can't talk about your platforms. You can't put your links. You can't put links underneath your show and have them clickable on video on demand. So no one's going to come back to your site and watch your show. So you need to understand these things. However, being on television is really cool. I totally get it. Totally get it. But I, my goal here is to make sure relationships don't get broken, expectations are in check, and be careful what you ask for. You might just get it. And if you get it, uh, let me tell you, I have never been so bogged down with work in my life. And you saw, you've seen how big our channel was. Uh, we had, um, we have a beautiful, beautiful television station. Look at that. You show me anybody right now, whoops, what did I do? Um, that I really blew up the screen, didn't I? Uh, show me anybody that's got a station like this um, that looks this pretty and has this many clients. And there's, I, I don't think any, I, I've looked at some of the new channels coming out and they look terrible. And look at this, we have a big selection of clients. And I'm not willing to go forward with these people because some are my friends, some of the old time business people we've de dealt with. And I just did not feel good about going forward with this. But it is cool. It's awesome. And if you're willing to, as a network, eat the cost. And, and, if, but, I, why would you be in business not to be in, eat the cost? And if you notice, people that are advertising Roku's, all they're talking about now is, hey, you can pay me to do commercials and do your business and pay me a amount and I'm going to give money back. <laughs> they got to earn income first. It's not going to happen. This is a reality check. And so, once again, it's cool. It's really neat to be on TV. We have kind of that believe in our, our heads that being on TV is this really cool. But is it worth the sacrifice? Is it worth the work? Can these people keep the promises? I couldn't, and I'm not, I wasn't willing to go there, and I stopped it before I had people upset with me. And it's like, is the networks you're working with, are they – Ask them these questions. Seriously, ask the questions. Because some of them may not even know yet. I'm trying to tell them. Some of them I'm notified saying, you better watch out because what you're saying is not true. It won't come true. You need to know that. So uh, otherwise, you're going to have people upset with you. So yeah, you can thumbs down my video here and be upset with me. Or you can face reality like maybe Rob's right. Maybe I should stop while I'm ahead before I have people upset with me. Or suck up the cost. You pay for it all and quit trying to suck people dry for money that you think you're going to be able to keep getting. But once they start asking questions like, where's my traffic? How many am I getting? And you can't answer those questions. Then you're going to look bad. And I stopped before I started looking bad. And I may look bad at doing these reports, but I can sleep at night. So can you? So guys, have a great day. Thank you for listening to Easy Street. I hope this was wisdom for you. Uh, for those that go forward, power to you. I hope you do great. But there's a lot of things that I was sucked into and things I was told I thought were true. And once I got in there, I was going, wait a minute. <laughs> Just trying to help. Anyway, guys, take care. Talk to you later. Bye now. Bye. Thank you very much for watching our video. Please take the time to like, subscribe, and share our videos all over the whole wide world. Thanks.